Hi, this is Maya, and it's June 10th, 2016. I have some things I'd like to share with you concerning time, time travel, timelines, that sort of thing. But first, let's watch this video together. It's only a little over four minutes long. Albielek discusses what he remembers from his six weeks spent in the year 2137 and two years he spent in 2749. One thing that I should stress is that many of the events he described as having happened, is happening now in our present time. The New World Order takeover and devastating climate change to name a few. The Montauk Project was a series of secret United States government projects conducted at Camp Hero or Montauk Air Force Station on Montauk, Long Island for the purpose of developing psychological warfare techniques and exotic research including time travel. Jacques Vallée describes allegations of the Montauk Project as an outgrowth of stories about the Philadelphia Experiment. Al describes what he remembers after he jumped off the USS Eldridge on August 13, 1943, date of the Philadelphia Experiment. He found himself with his brother, Duncan Cameron, in a hospital of the future for six weeks, recovering from radiation injuries. The medical system of that future used vibrational and light treatments. The TV programs were educational and news programs. That's where he noticed that Earth changes caused a lot of geographical changes that began in beginning of 21st century until 2025. The coastlines and interior of the US and Europe were drastically different from the way they are now. The water level had risen and Florida was reduced to the panhandle only. Atlanta, Georgia was only three miles from the ocean. The Mississippi became an inland waterway. The Great Lakes became one large lake. The U.S. infrastructure had collapsed. The U.S. and Canada were no longer referred to as nations. A loose form of local martial law existed 2137. Central government was gone. The magnetic poles of the Earth started to shift but in that timeline an artificial pole structure was created to prevent the collapse and reversal of the magnetic poles. As a result, the poles did not flip. The worldwide population was reduced to 300 million. The U.S. population was around 50 million. He claims that between 1954 to 2000 our government worked with the aliens acquiring technology, back and forward engineering all their technologies. The problems began between 2003 to 2005. The New World Order was taking over the planet but then a war developed. At some point a war broke out between the Russians, Chinese versus U.S. slash Europe. A number of U.S. cities were destroyed. The New World Order collapsed. The government has the technology to reduce radiation damage and nuclear waste within a few days, even now but refuses to use it for political reasons. In the future, the technology is used to clean up the radiation left from World War III. He then found himself inexplicably, in the year 2749 for nearly two years. He talks about what he learned while he was there. Then he was taken back to 2137 to pick up Duncan, after which they were both taken to 1983. There were ground-based and floating cities. The floating cities could be moved to different parts of the Earth. The synthetic intelligence computer system was a computer system that ran everything, there was no government. It was a huge crystalline floating structure. It interviewed them telepathically. The structure of society was completely socialistic. The basic needs for survival were taken care of for everyone. Let's just take that off. Uh-oh. I'm trying to stop it. Ah, there it is. 
So let's talk about this. Is that really our future, what Al Bielik saw? First of all, <clears throat> let me backtrack just a bit. In, in the early 1990s, I had a dream experience that was very profound, and I wrote it all down. And then not long after I had that experience, like within weeks, I believe, I read about the Montauk Project. Now remember, no internet then or anything like that. I guess I got a book at a library. I don't know how that came into my hands. I don't remember too long ago. But I read about it. And when I did, I saw the very striking correlation with my dream. So I asked my sources, those, etc., and received that this Montauk thing was indeed genuine, that there were parts of it that were not as it seemed, but that the core truth of it was genuine, and that my dream did reflect that. So the Montauk book that I read was written by Peter Moon. He's since written many books, probably before as well, but Mon the Montauk books and the whole his whole association with Al Bielik and the other fellow, you know, is pretty prominent in, the, in his work, or was at that time. Somehow I contacted Peter Moon, and I sent him my dream. He wrote back to me and said that it was very valid in regard to relationship to things that had not been published or known about, you know, that he knew from interviewing and being really rather close friends with Al and, oh, I can't think of the other guy's name. So um, he took it seriously, in other words. One thing led to another, several phone conversations, and I wound up contributing a small little blurb in his one of his books, actually two of his books, one later on as well. I mention this because uh, I became, I got to know a lot more about the whole Montauk project from Peter, and which also caused me to research it more akashically. And I feel that both Al and this other fellow <laughs> I can't think the name of, is um, his, their insights were basically very genuine. They're, they were genuine completely from the, the heart and soul of these individuals, what they believe they saw and experienced. One has to remember, though, and this is stressed by those, any of the time travelers, whether it's from the Montauk Project or the more recent uh, ones that are coming out now that are talking about their experiences, of government-controlled um, projects and other things that they have been um, they've been I don't know what to call it but they've given been given uh, hypnotic suggestions as well so that doesn't invalidate their work of what they saw but one has to realize that they are not entirely, they're telling what they thought they saw and experienced, but some of it, some of it has been influenced. Not only that, we're dealing with various timelines. That's what we're going to talk about here in a minute. So what we just saw that Al experienced, most of it I would say, if not all of it, was probably true. But it was a timeline that we don't have to go down. We're already going down it. I mean, let's face it, we're already there to an extent, but we can always change that. And that is what our conscious, the shifting of our conscious awareness is about right now, changing that. This whole thing with uh, Bernie and his, I didn't say his revolution, but the revolution that he perked, that he tweaked 
to allow people to wake up and realize that this was their chance, their moment. It's not po about politics. This is about changing a timeline, folks. This is what this is about, whether Bernie actually winds up winning the presidency or not. This is about changing a timeline. The timeline that you see Al going down. We don't have to live that. Kind of seems to turn out okay somewhere down the line, but no. We can shift it so that we move into the pyramidus radius matrix that prepares us for the ascension much, much, much earlier than having to go through all of this other stuff. And this is of paramount importance. Now, it's not just about the awakening of the 99% in the United States of America, but it is a key threshold. And of course, there are other things going on all over the world that are attempting to um, support that turning of the key. Of course, we're receiving a lot of assistance. It may not seem like it at times because things seem so screwed up, but actually they're just falling apart so we can get to the core of the light within. And one of the factors of all of this are the time walkers, these mysterious personages that Tho speaks about that I really have not grasped the true meaning of. I've really tried, folks. Of all the 50 years over plus that I've worked with all of this, um, the time walkers is one of the hardest things I have to try to really understand. <laughs> So I will tell you that up front. But what I do under think I understand about them from what Thoth has shared with me is that they are beings, they're, well, they're probably a lot of different time walkers, but the ones he's talking about, the Lemurian time walkers, come from Lemuria and are on a particular mission to straighten out timelines in the future. And they can't just, you know, take a wrench and get down under the plumbing and fix it. It's not like that. They have to work in cooperation with us. So they are present in this whole situation in some way or another. And our dear Osiris uh, and his Horus being are also time walkers, but they're ones that have, that's a whole other story really, because Osiris has apparently paused his time walking to hold the presence in um, the chamber of Osiris for this whole Osiris arising situation. Uh, again, that part I really don't understand, but there's something about that that's very important, so I keep working with it and asking more questions when I can. But the bottom line is we don't have to experience the future that Al Bielik saw, and that's not very far in the future. You know, I won't probably be alive then, and some of us older ones but the younger ones very likely will in some of these scenarios, especially if you realize that we're already working with genetics to uh, prolong life and uh, you know make people's lives longer and healthier and all of that. On one level, we are. Other people are trying to make us die off so they don't have so many people here and they can take over easily. So there's two factors going on. But, you know, the real longevity of the ancients does not come from manipulating genetics. It comes from a deeper source. And uh, that could very well play out in our future um, in time for these younger generations to live a very, very long time. And what about us that won't? You know, I saw this really shocking to me video, and it was some, uh, it was showing some older actors and and celebrities, and they were saying about climate change. Well, what do you think about it? And they were saying, well, I'll be dead then. I don't care. And the other one said, well, I'll be dead. I don't care. And another one said, who cares? I'll be dead then. I mean, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. Because for me, I mean... I'm part of the system, and when I say system, I mean it in a positive way. This 
beautiful, unflowering experience of Earth that I've been part of and incarnated in and will again, hopefully not until the New Earth Star version, but nevertheless, I'm in the game and I'm here for a purpose. P crossing over to the next level has nothing to do with, oh, I'll be dead then. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that really sort of ticked me off, as you can tell. I will still be very active with this whole process, only on another level. And I will be caring and compassionate about it. And I will do whatever I can, whatever is allowable for me to do, to help move us all into the next stage of the New Earth Star. People that don't realize that, I'm, I, I feel very sorry for them because they're going to be in for a shock, a big one. And it's not going to be pleasant if they think that that's it. They're going to have to evaluate where they didn't take part on some level, even internally. I'm not saying we all have to become revolutionaries. That's not what I mean. But we have to care and realize that we go on experiencing and being part of it when we're on the other side. Certainly Bernie does. I mean, what would happen if Bernie Sanders, 74 years old, said, oh, well, I'll be dead then. I don't care about global warming. That's the last thing in the world he's saying. And of course, you could say, well, my, you know, I care for my, my grandchildren and my generations to come. And certainly that's a very valid reason. And it's part of the reason. But I don't have any children. And I still care because of the greater picture. I know I kind of I got off on a tangent there. So we'll get back to time travel now. <laughs> So we are really indeed, you know, at the threshold. As the song goes, someone's a knocking on my door. And there are two doors and there are two knocks. And one is what they're calling the New World Order, but it's really much bigger than that. Thoth calls it the One World Legion, but he even says it's really much bigger than that. But it's not a bunch of... Uh, it's not as simple, you know, as, as anybody really puts out there. I mean, you know, like David Ick, he has some information I really agree on, but there are things I really disagree on, and I believe he's sincere in everything he says, but I disagree about some certain things. You know, we have, in, the, in this world, we agree, we disagree, and um, I don't agree that the Queen of England is a Lizzie, and that there's tons of Lizzie's out there in disguise. I, I don't agree with that. Won't go into all of that, but I, it, you know, for my thof channelings, that's not correct. I do agree there are alien species that are trying to, that are, have been very successful in controlling and manipulating a lot of our realities through their minions, which are the, what, thof, what, the, thof, what Bernie is calling the 1% and, and what is behind that 1%. But, you know, again, it's not just a simple track. What I mentioned in my last video um, on the itons and all of that, that I had seen on another video that a fellow was talking about, um, and I agreed with, where we're each creating our own little holographic universe, although it sort of connects and interfaces with everybody else's so that we can have some kind of a agreed upon or what Thoth calls consensual reality. So if you take that, if you factor that into the equation, none of this is just, oh, here's, this is what it is. Oh, this is, yeah, this is what it is. We have a very complex picture that's all kind of interfaced with one another. And when you think about it, it can scare the hell out of you. 
But, but there is a saving grace factor to this, I do believe. And that is, if we pull it all down into the center, like this picture here, this beautiful shining picture, all we really have left is this one big, beautiful, glowing light. Everything else falls away. All the lily, lilies, <laughs> lilies, all the lizards and the lilies and the thoth speak and, uh, you know, uh, Ishtar command and everything you can think of out there. And I'm not putting any of it down. I threw thoth speak into the pot. Let's just say it all disappears. And we have this one beautiful glowing light. So let's remember that. It's not that we have to just go brain dead to everything else and we sit there and think about the glowing light. That wouldn't really work out for us right now, all things considered. But, because we're on a path, you know, we're on a mission and we were like little energizer buddy, buddies. <laughs> I can't talk. It's three o'clock in the morning, guys. I haven't had any, any uh, substances. I just, it's early, okay? This is the time when I can do this, sort of. <laughs> I'm having a laughing fit now. I'm sorry. It was <laughs> it was the Energizer buddies that did it. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I've got to be serious here. I'm supposed to be a channel. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna get serious. Okay. I think I'm. Through laughing, I'm going to try to speak now, sensibly. But I can't remember what I was going to say. I'm going to have to edit this. This is terrible. I'm sorry. Oh. Every time I turn the mic back on, I think I'm serious. I burst out laughing again. But we are talking about a very serious thing. But you know, guys, I mean... We have to have laugh breaks. If we didn't, we'd go completely insane with all of this. So you're going to have to sort of put up with mine, I guess, right now, if you want to get to the rest of this video. Um, so what do we do about all of this? I mean, here we are in the midst of all these timeline tangles. And it's up to us as a world, to choose a timeline that we can all agree upon in our consensual reality. Individually, we have to choose our own timelines, but they all need to line up and agree in the consensual reality to take us into what Thoth is calling the Pyramidus Radius Matrix and beyond into the New Earth Star Reality. Now, that's assuming that that's where you want to go. Um, I mean... <clears throat> You know, as I speak, I can only speak from one of these holographic projections. And my holographic projections contains Thoth and all these 50-some-odd years that I've been, you know, relating to you, all this information. So if you want to go down that timeline, giggles and all, <laughs> um, then... This is what we're linking up to. Uh, I am assuming that the whole world is linking into a consensual reality that more or less is backed up by what Thoth is telling me. I mean, that has to be my assumption. I, I would be very depressed if I thought that, uh, you know, my 50 years worth was kind of down the drain. So I have a vested interest in assuming that. I'll be, you know, totally transparent about that fact. But um, that's where I'm coming from when I'm speaking about this. But if you want to put that aside and just say you want a better reality than what you're faced with on Al's timeline or anybody else's that takes you down into all these areas that are kind of dark and dirty before you come to the light, why do we have to do that? You know, let's let's move forward. And move into that light spectrum and do so in a conscious way that allows us to be spiritually proactive 
Now, you don't have to get signs and chant Bernie, or you don't have to get in line and, and shake your fist at the establishment out in the streets. You can do that if you want to, as long as it's nonviolent. But, uh, you know, there are other things to do. But you need to be proactive in a spiritual, heart-centered way. This is not a time to sit and just meditate unless you happen to be one heck of a meditator. And I mean someone that somebody can come along and stick nails in you while you're meditating, and it didn't even hurt you. If you're that kind of a meditator, go for it. That would be a great thing to do. But if you're not that kind of a meditator, just, you know, sitting there in your living room or wherever and doing a little meditation, which is wonderful and helpful, but if that's all you're planning to do, it's not enough. I'm telling you, it's not enough. We need to do that. We need to go into our inner being and be present and be light functional, but we also need to be proactive in some way. And that way will come to you through your meditations, through your light experiences, if you're saying, use me, allow me to be of service in a greater way on the planet at this time. Whether it is blogging, whether it is networking, whether it is speaking to your friends that you're afraid to speak to because you don't think they're going to be open enough to, to understanding the picture. However you can do it, whatever words you choose to use, whatever uh, particular uh, theme you want to approach, because there are a lot of different ones you could tag for this, but proactive about changing the world for the better and doing it from a deeper, more conscious reality. I mean, we've been trying for years to get things done on this planet from the 60s on, and it hasn't really worked very well, has it? Oh, yes, it's worked some. It's worked, you know, to some degree. Thank God for light beings like Martin Luther King and John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. None of these people were perfect. We can dig into their past, you know, the, to their private lives and say, oh, look what they did. But let's don't, you know, that falls by the wayside in regard to what they helped accomplish on this planet. And the true beautiful souls, they were flawed as we all are and what they accomplished. But, you know, it's still not enough, is it? And now is the time to make it all enough. And to say, as Bernie would say, about what has been transpiring on the dark side, enough is enough. And it's up to the individual how they do this, how they integrate themselves more now into the 3D reality. Most of you listening to this have been trying to not integrate yourself into the 3D reality because it's been so harsh, and that includes myself. And it's a tar pit, you know. It starts sticking on you and draws you in. And then you're all involved with what the things that are the last things in the world you want to be involved with. But I'm not talking about doing that. I'm talking about a new gameplay, a new way to integrate with the current reality as scruffy as it is and not get tainted by it, to bring it light, to bring it substance, to bring it the spoken word, to bring it the written word, to bring it the visual image, and not get tangled up in it. Let's think about that. Let's do more than think. Let's experience it in our inner being. Just take a moment. Just, just take a moment and, and, and feel what that might be like. Not how it's going to be done, but the feeling of what it might be like if you did it and it happened and you saw the positive effect of it. What does that feel like? I mean, that's power right there just in imagining it. Because then it will begin to unfold to you how you can accomplish it. And people will come into your lives that will help you accomplish it. And doors will open to you that will help you accomplish it. But that's not going to happen until you take that first step. 
And this is what creating timelines is all about. Well, I believe I'm going to conclude this video now. And folks, I'm sorry, I apologize, but I'm going to leave all the last stuff in because it takes so long to take it in, to edit it, if it's a, a video, this long, longer video, and do all that, and then upload it and do all that too. And I'm about the work. I only have so much energy with my physical situation, and I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> Laughs at all. Maybe you'll get a giggle out of it yourself. And just move on to the next video. So God bless you all.